As I continue the journey of scepticism, I also like to learn a little bit about science. So when a theist has scientific evidence that the Bible is in fact the word of a god, I was intrigued. I'm ready for a lesson in science and discovery. Hello, I'm the Skeptic. I watch videos on YouTube that make extraordinary claims, whether that's flat earth or strange conspiracies, but mostly the claim that a god is real, and then explain why I can't accept their position. Before we get into today's video, please do subscribe, hit that bell notification to be alerted for my next video, and drop a like. That would be fantastic. Mia Denota is a young theist YouTuber with over half a million subscribers. Most of her videos are about her life, but occasionally a video around the subject of Christianity comes up. This video offers scientific proof that the Bible is divinely inspired. Her brother showed her some numbers and this is what she came up with. As always, the original video is in the description. Hi everyone, it's Mia and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you evidence using chemistry and numerical values to show that the Bible is divinely inspired. Starting with chemistry. The elements we're looking at today is carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Uh, hold up. All I see is the word con here. Maybe Mia is telling us something. Is this proof that she's lying? <laughs> well, I'm just using special pleading, which will no doubt make an appearance several times throughout this video. And what's already cool about these elements is that they all contain the same amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons which is rare for an element because less than 10% of all the elements have the same amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, firstly, I wouldn't say that it's rare. 10% is 1 in 10. That's just uncommon in my opinion. Rare would be less than 1%, I would think. Also, I'm not sure how having the same amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons is relevant to anything. That's just the way things worked out. If things were different, they'd just be different. I just wanted you to be aware of that before we begin so you see how everything ties together. If everything tied together, everything would have had the same number of protons, neutrons and electrons, just saying. And that it's not probable to find these numbers organically in nature. So you can't just write this off as being a coincidence because it's common to find these numbers like this. Just because something isn't probable doesn't mean it's impossible. It's improbable that I could toss a coin and get 10 heads in a row. However, it's not impossible for it to happen. So it absolutely is okay to say, well, that's a cool coincidence. It's not. Well, I say it is. What now? Anyways, now let's begin. First, let's start with carbon. The carbon atom has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. All organic materials contain carbon, and carbon is found in all living things. Carbon atoms move consistently through living organisms and the material world, through the atmosphere, oceans, and the Earth's crust in what we know as the carbon cycle. And because carbon is found in every living thing, it can therefore be symbolic of all life and substance substance in the material world. Great! You understand that Earth is primarily a carbon-based planet. That doesn't demonstrate A, that a god is real, or B, that a book was inspired by said non-demonstrable god. Now, when we take a look at the Bible, the number six represents imperfection and mankind, because as humans, we are all imperfect. What if the number six was randomly selected as being the perfect number? What if being one over seven was one too many and therefore too much and dangerous? I'm sure you'd also find a way to make that fit the narrative. Words in a book that have been worked into some kind of meaning still does not demonstrate anything. Six is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter one, verse 31, when God created man on the sixth day. It's claimed God apparently created man on the sixth day, whereas science demonstrates that modern man only made an appearance some 13 to 14 billion years after the known universe came into existence. The very science you're using to try and demonstrate the truth of a book. Funny how it's only certain parts that are picked at. According to scholars, just as the number seven signifies completion or the perfection of God, the number six is one shy of that, which means it symbolizes 
imperfection. If seven is perfect and therefore six is imperfect, it would be reasonable to assume that two short of seven, being five obviously, is really imperfect. So when biblical scholars say that the number 555 conveys power coming into your life, that a god is coming to help you, but the element that has five protons, neutrons and electrons is boron, something that in high doses can cause infertility or nausea and diarrhoea. Well, what does that tell us? Maybe accepting a god in your life makes you sick then, using this logic. Also, in the Bible, the number of the beast, also known as the man of lawlessness, number is 666. And the beast's goal is to make mankind worship him instead of the one true God. And he does this by not letting anyone buy or sell unless they take the mark of the beast, which number is 666. So we see in the Bible, six is symbolic for imperfection, humans, and this fallen world. It could literally have been randomly picked as any number. None of this is demonstrating anything, Mia. You're just pointing out what things say, not showing how they demonstrate anything. Likewise, in chemistry, carbon, which is made up of 666, is found in all humans and aspects in an imperfect world. What makes it imperfect? Since it has the exact conditions needed for life to survive in the parts that it survives in. So you see the parallel. But wait, it gets even crazier. <laughs> I can barely contain my excitement. Let's take a look at oxygen. Oxygen has eight protons, eight neutrons, and eight electrons. Now, Jesus' name is equal to 888 in Gematria. Other words that are also equal to 888 in Gematria include, but are not limited to, Royal Rumble, Crybaby, But I'm Such a Loser, The Retarded Flat Earthers, Never Again, Colonna Terrorists. And Gematria is a Hebrew alphanumeric code that was probably used in biblical times and was later adopted by other cultures. Probably isn't the same as definitely. Here's an example of what it is. In the English language, gematria A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, and you see the pattern. Likewise, in the Greek alphabet, alpha equals 1, beta equals 2, gramma equals 3. What the heck is grandma doing here? Why is she getting involved in all this science stuff? And Jesus' name himself in Greek, is equal to 888. And if you're wondering why Greek, it's because the New Testament was written in Greek. And the Bible says that Jesus is life. The Bible says a lot of things, and yet we're no closer to actually demonstrating anything. And Jesus is equal to 888. And multiple titles used for Jesus in the Greek gematria are divisible by eight. Also divisible by four, two, and one. So what? Acknowledging that humans have apophenia, or the tendency to perceive meaningful connections between unrelated things, is a massive step. So physically, we need oxygen to live. Oxygen gives us life. And spiritually, Jesus gives us life. And it's 888 and 888. It's incredible because we know from science we need oxygen to live because that is what we breathe. And the Bible says we need Jesus to live because it says Jesus is life. So we need Jesus to truly and spiritually live and thrive just like we physically need oxygen. Since we're here because of science, let's go into this further. The oxygen we breathe is only 21% of the actual air around us, with 78% of it as nitrogen and the rest as a mixture of other stuff. Since you're likening oxygen to Jesus, pure Jesus is actually a poison. When we breathe the 21%, the oxygen molecules bind to the haemoglobin inside us to be transported around the body. Too high a concentration of oxygen overwhelms the haemoglobin, which then doesn't function properly. Looking at this another way, we could say that 21% of your 888 oxygen number is 186.48, which is miles away from the 888 of Jesus. But actually, since the air we breathe is more than just oxygen, we should probably include the 78% nitrogen, 777, just to make it a bit more relevant. 78% of 777 is 606.06, which added to the 186.48 gives us 792.54. Nothing to do with Jesus's 888. Sorry to burst that bubble. Next, let's take a look at nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons, seven protons, and seven neutrons. Seven in the Bible represents completeness or wholeness and perfection. So seven three times is the complete 
perfect number representing the trinity for the three sevens. So what we breathe to give us life, the breath of life is seven, seven, seven and eight, eight, eight. Please see my earlier percentage breakdown, Mia, for a more accurate representation. If you're going to use science and numbers, then use it. Don't just pick the parts that add bias to your argument, which, by the way, is not a strong one so far. In nature, in chemistry, and in the Bible, historians and archaeologists will confirm that what we read in the Bible was all written thousands of years before any of this science was discovered. And none of it is claiming to be science. Oxygen isn't an atomic number of 888, it's just number 8. If oxygen didn't have 8 protons, neutrons and electrons, it would have just been left out of the argument and something else found. Nothing here is demonstrating anything. It's a whole bunch of pattern and coincidental finds. Especially when you dive deeper into it, there's nothing there. And I have only a basic understanding of science. I'm not an expert and even I can see this is all fallacious. This is just one one of thousands of pieces of evidence that prove to us and show us that the Bible is truly divinely inspired by God. I disagree. This doesn't demonstrate in any way that it's inspired by a God. And if there are thousands more, I have the next few years worth of videos already set up. But come with your best argument first, because this really wasn't it. Because no man could have came up with these numbers thousands of years before the science was discovered. No, they didn't. You've just gone, huh, this looks like this. And instead of thinking, this is a cool coincidence, I wonder why that is, you've jumped straight to, a god did it. Typical. It is truly amazing. And reading the Bible is truly a blessing because we know it is truly God's word. No, we don't. So if you want to know God and you want to get into a relationship with him, read the Bible. I love making these types of videos and if you want, I'd love to keep making videos about evidence for the Bible because again, there's so much evidence. And I really can't wait to see those videos and finally be shown that actually there is a floaty person in the universe looking down on what is just a pinprick in the cosmos. How do you think Mia did? Did she convince you that random numbers almost matching what other random numbers equate to means there's a God? Let me know in the section below. But as for Jesus being equal to pure oxygen, nah, we can skeptic that off the list as an absurdity. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday.